Richard Feynman would have been 100 years old today, the 11th of May 2018. So we thought it was a good time to sit down with physicists and admirers and discuss the importance of his work and his personality in terms of drawing people towards the world of physics and scientific explanations. So we're joined by Professor Brian Cox. So someone said there are two ways of doing, of, of solving problems in physics. One is working really hard and the other one's asking Feynman. <laughs> that's what, and I think that's probably true. I mean, the frustration when you read biographies about him uh, amongst his colleagues is that he wasn't there as often as they wanted him to be. They wanted to go into his office and say, I'm stuck, can you help? And he would probably have helped, but he was out playing the bongos in uh, Brazil or somewhere like that. He wasn't. And that was him. I suppose he couldn't have been any other way. Leonard Melodnoff. So I went to him thinking maybe he could help me see what I was doing wrong. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, have you worked out that other fellow's stuff yourself, or did you just read his paper and follow along what he's saying? I'm just following the, what he's saying. I'm not thinking for myself. He says, well, I, well, until you do that, how do you know you're wrong? Maybe he's wrong. And then I was like, really? Oh, maybe I should have the confidence to think that maybe I know what I'm doing, or the creativity to, to look at it differently. And, and let me see what he's saying, and let me try and figure it out for myself. And I realized, that not only that he was wrong, but I realized why he was wrong, and I got my stuff published, and it uh, was became popular. <laughs> Dr. Helen Chersky. So the thing is that you, those those figures um, they give other people permission. Humans are very strange in that everyone wants to do things, and you know. But there is a thing where if you see someone else do it, it gives you permission. And so I think his influence on science went far beyond the technical because he gave other people permission to muck about. Now they still don't muck about nearly as much as I think they should, uh, which is a waste as far as I'm concerned, because I think you should play with all the toys in the world um, and use, you know, physics and chemistry and all the rest of it to make them better toys. Um, but he gave permission and that, yes, there's the Challenger and there's the, you know, the Nobel Prize winning material, but fundamentally he gave people permission to do science differently. And that is a huge contribution. Professor John Butterworth. He brought together quantum mechanics and special relativity via Dirac and people and put them in, in what we call the quantum field theory, which makes stunningly accurate predictions for the way atoms, electrons behave around atoms and the way light interacts in general. And it also actually set the language that the whole of the standard model of particle physics is now written in. So the other forces, although he didn't directly write down the theory for the weak interaction and the strong interaction, the language they're written in is very, owes a lot to the way Feynman developed quantum electrodynamics, which is the theory of photons and electrons. Christopher Sykes, Marcus Chown and more, and presented by me, Robin Ince. Also hear songs about Richard Feynman. You don't get many physicists getting songs about them, not enough really. Get to work, songwriters. All genius, all buffoon, the Richard Feynman documentary on the occasion of his 100th birthday will be available very soon on the Cosmic Shambles Network. CosmicShambles.com. Cosmic Shambles.com